Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ahmad Atamli. I'm the Chief Security Architect at NVIDIA. Um, I work on platform security. And today I'm going to share with you about some of our experience in designing security in a white box switch platform. Um, this whole journey started a while back when we started looking at how to enable secure boot on multiple platform. And secure boot is not a new topic. There has been support for secure boot for, for a decade now. And what is it about secure boot that is so important? And how does it apply in some platform and differ from, from other? This is where it kind of found this topic where is your root of trust? Because we tend to put a lot of emphasis on where is your root of trust and where does it start from? But we really don't consider the other factor that you know, might hinder the root of trust and untrustworthy. And this all goes back to what kind of environment we're looking at. And there are multiple type of environment with different attacks vectors. So if we start from the left side where there is an IoT device where you have access to, to the platform, then you can imagine the kind of attack that you can perform. If you have a flash device where you store your firmware with some right protect capability to prevent changing that firmware, with enough luck and knowing exactly where, where to dig, like in the left side here, you can disable this right protect. If you are more of a, a crafty attacker during the supply chain or with just enough physical access, you can insert a new chip on the board. You can chip a new, a new chip on the board that can intercept some messages maybe you can intercept a key. There's a lot that you can do if you have a physical access and you can uh, hinder the, some of the security function that you have um, and useful. It's not limited only to drilling in a chip or modifying a board. It could be also about stealing specific keys. Most of our function today and in data center, everything is about encrypting the data and keep that data safe. While you don't need to open the box sometimes to figure out what is that specific key, you can measure some traces of the encryption when the encryption is happening. And from measuring those traces, you can eventually after a 1 million measurement, if you're, if you're lucky and you have some uh, mitigation and, and your uh, encryption algorithm, you can deduce what is the key that is being used. So the kind of environment really matters and we don't really just need to open the box in order to, to, to steal keys. But this doesn't apply to every type of platform from the IoT world where you have, which are easy to access a device and perform a physical attack. We still have those edge environment where you don't have as much access. They might be gated. They're not exactly as cloud environment and data center where things are locked and video sometimes in an edge device that sits at your customer or in a shared location with um, other vendors. But what, what, what is in common that someone might have access to your box, might be present nearby to take traces or might be able to connect a specific cable and try to inject code into your machine or try to see if there is any vulnerability if it has this connection in order to, to be able to hack into your system. The ultimate goal for every attacker to obtain information and he is lucky he wants to take control of that specific machine. Once you take control over, then it's game is over and you persist on the platform. And for that, we need something like secure boot and securing the components that are relevant that can assure the integrity of the system. When we're talking about switch platform, things are quite 
more complex than your normal laptops or um, your watch or your, your phone, they tend to be more involved. The complexity of computing platforms are getting more and more, and we're seeing more uh, components and more devices adding to these platforms. And the attack would be coming from, from everywhere. So typical things like uh, CPLD, CPU, and FPGA, uh, the European stew. And of course, the easiest thing is where we want to use a JTAG to connect to try to program all these countless um, SPI devices where we store the firmware and store the con configuration. My point here that the tax vector is quite large here. And so far, we've been focusing only on the CPU and making sure that the root of trust is in with the CPU. That means we need to load an authentic firmware. The bias need to be signed, and that will eventually guarantee that we are loading um, a trusted and measured operating system. But this is not quite true. And we're looking at it from a, a system designer point of view. What he sees um, is some boards connected on it. There is a CPU, there is a TPM, a CPLD that need to manage the resets, clocks, and so on. There will be a switch. There will be all the SSDs. There are all sort of connections that need to connect to each other to manage the temperatures, uh, voltage, uh, fans, allow programmability of the platform. System designer would try to make it also easy for, for the production. That means an easy way to go and program all those devices. So in, in case something goes wrong, there will be an easy way to, to, to recover it. If there is a problem with the platform, you will want an easy way to go about debugging it. So how do I provide accessing access to debug each one of these components, whether it's the BIOS, whether a flash device that is failing, whether it's the CPLD. This is the mind that goes inside a system designer. I want to guarantee that there is an update, fail safe, so that the system is all the time up and running. I want to make sure um, I can have an option and to recover that platform. But in fact, things are quite more complex. And for a system security architect, the view is quite different. Where a system designer to see a two SPI flashes as an option for a fail safe and an option for another one to, to recover, another, another soft uh, system security architect sees this as a point to attack. So each one of those flashes might hold some data that eventually can end up in compromising the system. So an attack can be easily timed if you know how to switch between the two SPI flashes. If you don't have a right protect on an SPI, then you might be able to inject code. The CPLD, if it's compromised, then it might even time your attack in a way that you load some code and some data from one flash device. And then after the authentication, and you know that whatever content is good, my switch to another. My point is here, we can't really assume that other component in the system will play ball and act as they should. Because an attack in each one of those eventually can end up harming the system. Now, depend what is the functionality that you're trying to, to achieve here. So if we're talking about the integrity of that system, I want to make sure that I'm loading the right firmware, the right operating system, and that eventually it behaves as I expect it to behave. But from security point of view, there are more features you might want to support. You want to make sure that an update is successful. You want to make sure that if your platform needs recovery, it does recover the right firmware and it doesn't roll back to, to an older firmware. The question, how do we achieve that? How do we achieve that those specific corners, 
when they happen, we can load the right component and everything play as it should. And the answer to this doesn't um, involve the CPU only. It also involves components like CPLD, and it involves the TPM that it's up and running at the same time. It makes sure that the TPM is storing the measurement and is not resetted. If I want to support a mechanism like attestation, then I need to make sure the CPLD does not reset my TPM middleway and allow a new component to go and measure and load a new measurement inside the TPM. It doesn't end there. Depending what is a feature that you want to do uh, to achieve and what is the kind of uh, integrity you want to, to get inside the CPU. There has been a tag that has been showing on the last decade that if you change the voltage, then your TPM, some, some TPM will start acting out and start splitting data and function in a way that they will leak data. Some processor that support trusted execution environment, when the voltage changes and was pushed to the limit, they also the same thing, start malfunctioning and started giving uh, wrong results and started leaking data that can eventually lead to understanding what is the key that is being used and compromise the integrity of, of that platform. So what do we do? The other thing that we need to support on white switch platform is basically a root of trust. We still need that CPU, but we need also to be flexible. There are many different operating system out there and we need to give the choice for, for the user to come and install his operating system. While the hardware manufacturer need to still be able to make sure that the right bias that is coming from him is actually running on that uh, specific platform and the integrity of the firmware and the software that layers that he provide are in place. So for that, the boot process looks something like that. We start from the microcode that needs support with the hardware root of trust, assuming that the other component in the system as well doing their, their part, hardware root of trust need to be present not only in the CPU, but also on those components that can interfere with the boot. That means my CPLD need to be trusted as well. So I can trust it to perform some of the function that are necessary to the boot. Once I started booting, I need to allow the option to insert in your keys. So the user can come and insert his key and can decide and take ownership of that specific platform. So in that sense, the hardware manufacturer would claim the ownership of the first four components. And then the user that bringing his NOS can install it on from the fourth level where can he embed his keys, remove the key that he doesn't want to use and take ownership of that platform. This kind of model allow flexibility for the user to bring his own key and run only the relevant NOS on that specific platform. Things that we need to look at when securing a um, computing platform and switch in particular has been there and the recommendation is to use BIOS protection guidelines that's mostly limited to, to, to the CPU. We still need to consider all those specifications regarding platform firmware resiliency, uh, looking at uh, the right cryptographic models with the right uh, certification. So using FIPS 140-3, which is coming in you now with level two, making sure we are using the right cryptographic models because one change and and an algorithm might deem it unreliable. Trust the platform model because that's what would allow us eventually to attest the software of the platform. And UEFI would allow would give us the flexibility to 
give the option to the user to load different operating system. This is good, but we still need to consider other things like other devices on the platform and make sure those components also trustworthy and function as they should. This is the only way we can um, assure the integrity of that specific platform. So for this, I wanna finish my talk today and call for a specific action. Security is vague in many places. And some people might argue that some specific platform does not require the same level of security and not every device need to be um, secured or every component need to have secure boot in place. Eventually those things are determined by risk assessment of what can happen if this specific component on the platform is compromised. Our research has showed that some components, if they are compromised, they can interfere with this secure boot and they can compromise the mechanism. So what are those things? What, what are those components that we need to have secure? So we need more work to understand the complexity and to give specific instructions of which components need um, to be checked and to have secure boot embedded in them. So we need better to understand this and define how secure boot would be in a switch platform, something beyond the main CPU. When talking about these kind of system, they're quite complicated because they have many different components. And as a result, when you put everything together, about more than 10, 15, 20 flashes in one system, sometimes with fail safes, the provisioning become a nightmare. So how do you guarantee a way, an easy way where you don't have mistakes and you can still provision all those devices and make sure you provision them the right way without eventually making a break. In this platform, how do we support measurement and attestation? Do I have too many components? Do we include something like the firmware of the PSU? Do we include every firmware in the platform? And how do we deal with the fact that increase the cost of designing such secure system? So we need some relaxation and a better definition to make it more specific to this kind of platform. Because eventually getting an ultimate security is impossible. So the, all this is part of the work that is being done on uh, OCT security. And please join us to define how to secure switches. Thank you. Thanks, Ahmed. Questions? I'm watching the chat as well, in case there are questions, none yet. So while we wait, while we wait for questions, uh, come on, just maybe, you know, I like the call to action. Um, was wondering if there was anything you had um, suggestions to you know specific not specific vendors not like calling out companies but you know but like different types of vendors you know whether the system vendors or the chip vendors or the firmware teams or the nos vendors like what are there specific efforts or that are that you could say would would match to different members of the of the community here um because I, I saw the different phases and different parts you were calling out, but to, to sort of say, hey, these are we'd love to see these companies come together and work on this and um, these types of companies, you know, at this component level, work on this. Yeah, I think uh, I think my call you could group it into those uh, providers of the components on the switch platform. 
So starting from a CPLD, I know that there's been a lot of work being done by uh, Lattice and uh, Intel on providing uh, secure CPLD, but you still see a lot of FPGAs coming out there without um, secure, secure boot or any security involved. So those components that go eventually to whoever building, you know, the board, this is basically the call for them to consider what are the risks in place. You know, some PSUs are also have firmware today. There is some research that we've been doing and to analyze what is what are the implications. But we're calling for those provide those components and saying what what are the risks. And are there the risks severe enough that require for embedding security in the component they provide? So it's quite hard to group them because they're quite many. But if I group them under the same one, which is the, the provider of those components that sit in a switch platform. So switch, CPLD, CPU, and FPGA, BSU, those are the components that I can think of on top of my head. Yeah. I was wondering if, and you know, I don't see questions yet, but uh, Rupa, if you see them like I know. Yeah, there is um, one. Oh, was there one? Yeah, there is one that says, uh, which Odium switch platforms have a TPM and secure UEFI today? Sorry, didn't capture the question thoroughly. So yeah, which Odium switch vendors, uh, switch platforms have a TPM and secure U UEFI today? Do you, uh, switch. which vendors are engaged? Yeah, switches, which switch uh, platforms? Yeah, to, today, um... Where in NVIDIA actually do have switch platform with uh, TPMs um, involved and, and UFI. So the whole secure boot process is measured and stored inside TPM. So we do have those type of platform. Uh, some vendors have different solutions, not necessarily using TPM, um, but I can't tell of what is coming next. What available out there, I know that there are other solutions, maybe by Cisco, that might involve the um, trust anchor, but I'm not uh, I'm not familiar. Any others that are involved in the security group right now? Any switch vendors? I believe um, Cisco is involved. Um, okay. Nvidia. Yeah. Those are the the one on top of my head. Okay. Thank you. I was wondering if we could if we could create some sort of I don't know if security checklist might be too simplified, but if there's some sort of uh, white paper or a evaluation guide or, you know, taking some of the things here and sort of having a, hey, have you checked the, this part, this part, you know, have you checked you know, like root and crust here? Have you checked this part? Have you checked this part? Just, like the, and you know, maybe there's not a good option for certain switches, you know, big or technologies that people are looking at. But then at least it's like a, almost a guide for, for not only for developers and, and providers, but also for the, um, the consumers, the operators, they have these are the things. I mean, I, I know I've seen those in, in sort of other parts of the, you know, commercial offerings, but I wonder if OCP. Yeah. Is that like a certification there. process? Or... Yeah, so there, there are, th this is, yeah, I mean, that's a very good, suggestion about looking at things. Certification covers some part of it, but it doesn't give, so some of the recommendation I give in, in my slide, which is, you know, following the bias protection guideline, but this is quite also old, that there are some attacks that are quite newer, uh, you know, firmware resiliency, cryptographic model of most important because when cryptography is very sensitive. So any small change, like a constant value eventually end up changing the entire thing. So there are standards in place and certification like FIPS where we need to have it. But I don't think there are certification on the system level or on platform level. So something like the implementation guideline for the BIOS, this is very specifically towards CPUs. The firmware resiliency is also very, very general per component. Yeah. But eventually <clears throat> it falls to which component need to have this. CPLD don't have firmware, for instance. They do have different type of images. It's more RTL based. So do they fall under 
but they don't. And, and that needs to, things we need more evaluation of this because sometimes also it's not only about the firmware, it's also about the configuration yeah. of that specific platform. So we don't want people to change that specific configuration and we want to make sure that maybe it's logged and you know the integrity is checked prior to using the specific configuration. Yeah, I think certification, Rupa, yeah, I think it'd be, I was thinking something almost like just a, like this slide, if you could take this and kind of ex, expand on yeah. it, like where there are certifications, great, where there aren't, and it's like, hey, just ask the questions and look into it or, or, or see if it has this or not. Um, so then that way people start asking their, you know, uh, consumers start asking their vendors uh, about it and, and again, certification is sort of like the, the most strong, uh, yeah, but just sort of covering the space. Maybe it's something we can follow up on. It might be an interesting thing to an artifact that we could perhaps share or, or develop uh, within the group. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, Amad, thank you very much.